Here's a short demo video to show you the Stanton SCS3 system in use with Mix 1.80 Beta 2. I've just plugged in the SCS3M. I'm going to show you the, how to configure Mix from scratch in this video because there's been a lot of questions about that. So this is it. I have just the power plugged into it and the uh, not plugged into any USB at all yet. So that's what exactly what I'm going to do right now. Just plugged into USB and now the system sees it's seeing all three of the devices as they initialize. And now I'm going to go over to Mix 1.80 Beta 2. I happen to have an X64 system here. I'm going to go to my, this is what it does when it first starts up. I'm going to go to my music library, tell it OK. It's going to scan that directory. And then here we are in Mix. So now to set the controllers up, it's extremely easy. Notice I didn't have any derouter running or anything. Just click Options, Preferences. MIDI controllers, expand it, and you'll see all the controllers attached. Since I'm in Windows, uh, the SCS3s only show up as USB audio device, but the first one is usually the mixer, the SCS3M. So you click it, click Enabled, drop down the list, SCS3M, and then these two are the 3Ds, so hit it, hit Enabled, scroll down, the 3D, and one more time, Enabled, scroll down, 3D, click OK, and watch as the controllers initialize. And now we're ready to rock. I'm going to click library here in mix. Now I'm not going to go through all of the um, features that I've shown in the other videos because this would take a whole lot longer than the 10 minutes I'm allowed. But I uh, will show you in the track select mode in 1.8. Now no longer have delays. You can scroll as far down as you want without any trouble. And of course it works with both controllers because we have simultaneous MIDI control. Um, so let's first choose a track here. And now Mix is currently analyzing this track because I haven't loaded any tracks before since this started with a clean config. Oh, I'm going to set my audio options too. I'll show you the best way to do this for Windows. Go to Options, Preferences, Sound Hardware, Sound API. Always try to choose ASIO or Wasapi if you're on Vista or uh, Windows 7. I'm on XP here, so there's no choice for Wasapi. Anyway, choose ASIO. And choose your, your uh, device, in my case the NVIDIA card built in is what I'm testing with. Um, if I wanted to plug my headphones into another device I could do that by choosing another device and another set of channels, but I'm just going to use the master output, I'm not using any headphones right now. Uh, my system can support latency all the way down to one millisecond, so that's what I'm choosing. Click OK, and you'll see the controllers are initializing again. Every time you exit preferences they'll do that. And now we're ready to play. So as you can see, both uh, SCS3Ds are set to the first deck. Um, just press deck to change one of them, and now that's on the other deck. So while that's playing, of course, I can pick another track and start that playing if I want to. Anyway, um, the, uh, the, the main thing to notice here is that everything is tied together um, with mix. So if I, for example, change this controller back to deck one, now this is deck one, this is deck one on the mixer, and this is deck, this whole controller is deck one on this side. So if I go to change the volume, you'll notice it'll change in all three places at once, no matter which controller I use. And I could even do it on the screen as well, and it'll change. So every, you've got complete and total integration. This isn't just with the SCS3, it's with any MIDI controller you attach to mix. Likewise with um, hot cues, if I choose hot, this, hot cue page one on both, uh, they're both controlling deck one. Let me just start the track and find a spot, I guess. Find some beats. So as you see, as soon as I uh, hit here to, to, to mark a cue, you'll see it's instantly marked on here on the other controller as well. And likewise, if I go to delete a cue, it deletes on the other controller immediately. So everything is totally integrated. Of course, same thing with the EQs. If I change it here, you'll see it in all three places because this is, of course, EQs on the, on the mixer. The effects parameters are also on the mixer, and likewise if I change them here. So basically, again, total integration with everything. Now, let's get to new features. Let's reset this. The new stuff on the SCS3, since now we've got multiple deck capability, you don't want to accidentally switch decks by just tapping deck, typically, if you have a setup like this. So if you hold deck and hit play, sorry, hold deck and hit sync, I mean, now it'll lock it in deck mode. So if you press any of the other mode, it'll just go to the deck mode on that uh, on the deck you have selected. When it's in the single deck mode, hold deck and hit play to actually change change the deck it's controlling. And now it stays on deck B all the time unless you explicitly hit deck and hit play. 
In deck mode, it's the same thing as in 1.7. This controls the crossfader, as, of course, this actually controls the crossfader. Um, I didn't really change anything from that, just because the uh, SCS3 mapping is set to control everything in Mix. So you can, you can use Mix with just one of these if you wanted to, and then add these other ones later. Um, so that's just a holdover for that. The main thing is it doesn't accidentally change modes. The stuff on the mixer, let's, let's cover that quick. The, um, the, these two, obviously this is deck one and this is deck two. This controls the pitch on deck one, and you can see it's moving on the, on the SCS 3D as well. And this is the pitch on deck two. In deck mode, this pitch actually represents the balance, the uh, master balance. So anyway, here, if I change the pitch, it's changing in both places. Um, holding down the uh, deck select on the mixer actually is just a modifier mode so you'll see that the letter C lights up in addition to the A. In this mode this controls the um, gain of the track and this will adjust, uh, this will do fine pitch adjust um, while you're holding this button down. This will toggle flanger, you can see it on the screen, and this EQ will, is the same thing as pressing sync and you'll see that the, the 3D will react as well when I press sync. Just like if I go to effects and toggle flanger on and off, it happens on the mixer as well. So, got total integration there. Same thing with this one. You hold this down, it does the same functions on the right side. And holding down master lets you have access to the master controls. Like this one is the um, pre and main headphone mix. This one is the master balance. And if you hold down the EQ, the current mode button here, and press these, it'll reset to the center. Uh, and this adjusts the headphone volume and this adjusts the master volume. Um, this is rewind, this is fast forward, this is Q, and this is play. There's a bug right now in 1.8 that these lights aren't lighting up when you have more than one controller attached. We're aware of that, we're, we're working on it. If you just have a, th a 3M, these, these lights will work. Same thing with the headphone Q button. And as you can see, it is toggling because the 3D is reacting. A big uh, feature here, uh, for those that are familiar with something called strip search on other controllers, while you're holding down the, the deck modifier, you can use the crossfader area as a, as a needle drop. So as you can see, I touch somewhere and it'll jump to that part of the track. And play the track and you can see what I'm talking about. So, anywhere you want to go. It's really nice. We also have enhanced scratching. It stops completely when you hold your finger in one place, which is the way it should have been from all along, but we had to do a lot of work to make this happen much better like it is now. In uh, red mode and purple mode, this, the center slider does scratching. When it's in red mode, the, the outside circle is a jog, it's like a pitch bend. And it's in uh, purple mode, the circle works just like a record. I tried to make the, the light line up with where your finger is, but it's very difficult to do that because this is all relative. Anyway, if you're scratching, it's, it's close enough and you can change some of, the, uh, some of the parameters in the script if you like to make it looser or tighter. We also have the uh, end of track indicator. Uh, when you, within 30 seconds, it'll flash slowly, and when it's within 15 seconds, it flashes quickly. Just jump to the end here quick. As you can see, it's now flashing fast. So it gives you a clue that you're almost about to run out of, out of the track. Now, if we're going to do a little bit of mixing, I'll show you how to record the mix. Go to the Options, Record Mix, and you can choose the type. If um, we're, we're going to be adding more types. Right now, it just records Wave. Um, just type a name for it. Hit Enter. And as soon as you start playing a song, it takes about five seconds, but then it will start recording. So I'm going to click at the beginning of the track and start at the cue point. I'm going to wait five seconds for it to. There it goes. You can, it showed up on the desktop. And of course, we've got the crossfader here with, with the uh, touch effects. So this is like it's like a, it's like a perfect crossfader. positionally accurate, so as you can see, no sticker drift with the lights. 